Hey guys, in this video we'll be learning about carbohydrates. If you'd like to get this set of notes, please look at the description on how you can get them. Let's start the video. First, the composition of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are made up of three elements, namely carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. These three elements also exist in a specific ratio, that is, the ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen is 1 to 2 to 1. When we think about carbohydrates, we think about bread. Or rice these are commonly associated with carbohydrates carbohydrate also includes many other things such as potatoes sugar and even the stuff that gives you the malty taste in malt drinks let's explore that there are three types of carbohydrates the first is the monosaccharide mono stands for one or single when you combine two monosaccharides together then you get disaccharide di means two and when you combine many of the monomers, which is the monosaccharide, when you combine many, many monosaccharides together or several disaccharides together, then you get a long chain consisting of many monosaccharides joined together chemically. And this is called the polysaccharide. Poly stands for many. Let's zoom into monosaccharides. When we say carbohydrate, we normally associate it with sugars. And so we associate carbohydrates with the sweet taste. And this is true for monosaccharides and disaccharides. So the first property of monosaccharides is that it has a sweet taste. Monosaccharides are also the simplest of all the carbohydrates. They can form crystals that dissolve in water. And this is a property that you've probably learned before. But all monosaccharides are reducing sugars, which means they are able to reduce the Benedict's reagent, Benedict's solution in Benedict's test, so that we get a brick red precipitate at the end. The blue Benedict solution will be reduced to a brick red precipitate. And therefore the test for monosaccharides is the Benedict's test, where if a monosaccharide is present, there will be a brick red precipitate as the positive result. Let's look at the monosaccharides. There are three monosaccharides. The most common monosaccharide is glucose. Glucose can be found in rice, wheat and grapes, for example. The next monosaccharide is galactose. Now, I know this sounds like a supervillain or superhero from a Marvel film, but galactose, I'm sure you're familiar with the second part, lactose, which can be found in milk. And the last monosaccharide is fructose. Fructose can be found in honey and fruits. So if you've tasted all of these things, you will know that the monosaccharides have a slightly different type of sweetness, even though all of them are sweet. Let's go on to disaccharides. Disaccharides are formed by chemically combining two monosaccharides. And this process of formation of disaccharides is called condensation. Now the opposite process where disaccharides are broken down, when disaccharides are broken down, they are broken down into two individual monosaccharides. And this process is known as hydrolysis. Hydro stands for water, lysis stands for breakdown. The process of hydrolysis is the breaking down of a substance by adding water. Let's look at these reactions specific to the disaccharides. There are again three types of disaccharides. The first is maltose. If you're curious how maltose tastes, next time you go to the supermarket, look for a malt drink. You will get a very unique sweetness once again that's different from the rest. So this is coming from maltose. And the process of condensation of maltose, as I mentioned earlier, disaccharides are made from two monosaccharides being combined chemically. One of the monosaccharides is always glucose. The other one for maltose is also glucose. The condensation process of maltose is glucose and glucose gives maltose and water. This is why the process is called condensation, because at the end of this process, one molecule of water is formed. And so hydrolysis, the process of breaking down maltose, would simply be the exact opposite of this. When we add water to break down maltose, then we get glucose and glucose. Maltose is typically found in grains. The next disaccharide we're going to discuss is lactose. And lactose is formed from first glucose. All disaccharides have glucose. But the other component, the other monosaccharide in lactose is galactose. So glucose and galactose gives lactose and water. Condensation process. Water is formed in the end. Hydrolysis is just the opposite. Lactose and water, you get glucose and galactose. And of course, as we all are familiar, lactose is found in dairy products. And therefore, it is found in milk. The last disaccharide is... Sucrose. Sucrose is the form of sugar that we add to our drinks. And sucrose consists of, again, of course, glucose, but the other monosaccharide is fructose. So glucose and fructose makes sucrose, and of course, since it's condensation, 
one molecule of water is formed. The opposite process, hydrolysis, is just the opposite. Add water to sucrose and under the right conditions, this will give glucose and fructose. Sucrose is commonly found in sweet fruits and sugarcane. It is worth noting that sucrose is the only non-reducing sugar out of all the disaccharides. Maltose and lactose are reducing sugars as well, which means if you test them with benedict solution, they will give a brick red precipitate, whereas sucrose will not. The final type of carbohydrate is the polysaccharide. Polysaccharide is a complex carbohydrate. That is because it is formed through the condensation of hundreds of monosaccharides. Put together hundreds of monosaccharides and you get one long polysaccharide. Although carbohydrates are associated with sweetness, if you think about it, rice doesn't really taste sweet. Neither does potato. So therefore, polysaccharides do not taste sweet. They also do not crystallize and are insoluble in water. So you can see the properties of polysaccharides are the opposite of the properties of monosaccharides. Once again, we have three types of polysaccharides. The most common one is starch. If your staple is rice and you've washed rice before, you will notice that the water turns slightly milky. That is because starch is suspended in the water and we wash it off you wash it a few times until you get clear water this is because we are removing all the excess starch from the rice before we cook it as you've learned before starch is the main polysaccharide storage in plants the main energy storage in plants and the source of starch is from grains from potatoes and from legumes another type of polysaccharide is Glycogen. Just like starch is the main storage for plant cells, glycogen is the main polysaccharide storage for animal cells. Glycogen is commonly found in muscle cells and animal liver cells because these cells require a lot of energy and therefore they store a lot of carbohydrate since carbohydrate is the source of energy. Finally, we have cellulose. Again, this is a very familiar name. Cellulose is the main structure of plant cell wall. And therefore, it can be found in plant cells. When we talk about the importance of carbohydrates, you need to remember the functions of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates is number one, the main source of energy in cells. Glucose is the main substrate in cellular respiration. Number two, carbohydrates act as food reserves, energy reserves, that is in the form of starch in plants and glycogen in animals. And number three, carbohydrates also form support structures such as cellulose in the cell wall. That's it for carbohydrate, guys. If you would like to get your hands on these set of notes, please look at the description on how you can get it. I hope you've learned. If you have, please do hit that like button. It really does help the channel a lot. Thank you very much for doing that. See you guys in the next one.